Welcome all of you to this live program at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Professor Hiranaka Takafumi from Osaka, Japan. Dr. Hiranaka is Chief of Department of Orthopedic Surgery and the Director of Joint Surgery at the Takatsuki General Hospital in Japan. He's also a clinical professor at the Kobe University School of Medicine and Director of the Ajinkai Healthcare Corporation. Dr. Hiranaka completed his orthopedic residency at the Kobe University School of Medicine in 1988. He's certified by the Japanese Orthopedic Association for Joint Arthroplasty and Regenerative Medicine. During his professional tenure, he has performed 2,800 knee arthroplasties, of which 1,200 are knees, another 1,550 are uni knees, and also performed around 600 hip arthroplasties. He has over 64 PubMed Index publications and is a reviewer for several journals. If you've noticed, Dr. Hiranaka has delivered a lecture on his channel in the past and has already reached a huge audience. And today it's my great honor to bring back Professor Hiranaka Takafumi for this wonderful live program. Over to you, Professor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Hiranaka uh, from Japan. Uh, last time I told about Oxford Years of Plasty, and uh, today, I want to talk about the concept of a new concept of TKA, uh, the called personalized alignment for the nearsoplasty. It's a, a quite uh, interesting era because concept of TK is changing, completely changing from uh, the systematic approach to the personalized approach. But it makes some confusion. So uh, there are many names such like kinematic alignment, functional alignment, inverse kinematic alignment, uh, restricted kinematic alignment. So I will uh, make sure what is the personalized alignment, what is the kinematic alignment yeah. with my slide. Uh, this is my hospital. Is We are very, very small team, but very active. Uh, my I am the chief of uh, the orthopedic department and in also a uh, head of uh, the knee, uh, knee surgery and the other he is the spine and he's the hip anyway i uh, today's my topic is tk you know basically what is uh, what are required required for tk the stability mobility pain free and durability uh, seeking the better technique, imp instrument, component, or the material. But uh, the recently, the most registered showed that uh, the implant survival rate is around 90%, 95% for 10 years. And the revision rate of 10 years is accounted for around 5%. Year, 5 uh, this tendency is stable after 2000s. Uh, comparing the previous study, the cause of revision is changed from uh, such as uh, some technical error and uh, the quality of component and the material. Uh, now, so this uh, reason is decreased recently. But even uh, the good survival rate uh, after uh, the TKA, but satisfaction of patient is not perfect. So around 20% patient unsatisfies after TKA. And around 25% don't want to have TKA again. And uh, more than half patient had uh, the some residual symptoms such as pain and discomfort, uh, the sound. So, uh, how do you improve? So, how uh, do you improve the patient satisfaction uh, using the computer assistance and improved component uh, such as size variation, anatomical shape, and the gender specific, and the improved material? But unfortunately, the improvement seems minimal. What is the aim of TKA? So we should reconsider uh, proper alignment, proper gap or balancing, or proper kinematics. What is the proper? Uh, can we really find the goals? 
So because uh, the patient kinematics is different among the patients, and knee motion in combination of rolling and gliding and rotation, so-called media pivot motion. This combination is different among the patient. So uh, we cannot define only the one goal, single goal. Uh, for a long time from uh, the beginning of the TKA, so we have aimed to uh, the perfect goal, the so-called neutral mechanical alignment, where the leg is straight. In other words, HKA angle is zero degrees, and the components are implanted the perpendicular to the mechanical axis and the balance gap, the parallel and the balance gap in the extension and the fraction. Uh, despite the variation of the patient anatomy and the morphology uh, characteristic, the TKA has aimed this perfect goal on a single so-called one size fit all systematic approach. But uh, this paper is a breakthrough of uh, the new movement of the TKA. Uh, the even in the Western people, uh, the average uh, leg is not straight, not neutral. In an average HK angle is 1.3 degrees in velas, and constitutional velas that is the more than three degrees velas is accounted for the thirties. 2% for male and 17% for the female. So a leg is not always straight. And this tendency is more prevalent, more obvious in the Asian. And furthermore, joint line is not perpendicular to the mechanical axis, approximately 30 degrees, it medially inclined like this. And uh, this uh, inclination is called as joint line obliquity. It's joint line obliquity a body some of the patients. It is the one characteristic of the patient's knee. So uh, this is a contradiction between the joint line and the components because in the mechanical alignment TKA, the components are implanted, implanted perpendicular to the mechanical axis. So if we adjust the larger joint line, middle joint line and going up, on the contrary, if we adjust the media side, lateral joint line uh, goes down. So uh, using the mechanical alignment or TKA, medial side or lateral side or both a joint line can change. If the joint line elevates, uh, mid fraction, uh, mid fraction is rapidic, is rapidly can occur. Furthermore, the gap is not always like tangra. This is very, very uh, famous. In the friction, the lateral side is looser than the medial side, uh, shown in the main papers. So uh, considering the variation of the patient uh, morphology, uh, anatomy, and the character, uh, characteristic, and the kinematics, Oh, this is the one solution to uh, implant the components it's along the patient's native joint surface. Oh, this is the first tree reported by Howell uh, 2008, named uh, custom fit TKA, uh, using the PSI, so component uh, plan to set to replacing uh, replicating the patient's joint, uh, native joint line like this. 
But now, uh, this is uh, progress to uh, so-called kinematic alignment, TKA. The previously, previously, this kinematic alignment is performed using the PSI, but now uh, this technique is uh, used uh, using the uh, uh, no, 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 the conventional instrument, so-called caliper kinematic alignment. Anyway, uh, the principle of kinematic alignment is uh, implant uh, co set the components along the three kinematic axis. Uh, that is the green one. Green one is a uh, friction axis of the tibia, so-called uh, condylar axis or cylindrical axis. Uh, this is the center of the medial and uh, lateral condyle, like this. So this is a green one. Uh, second axis is a purple one, is the patellar friction axis, uh, this one. Uh, the purple one is, is slightly upper and slightly anterior. Uh, this is the center of the patella movement. So patella moved around this line. This is called as uh, the second line. And the third line is a longitudinal lo rotation axis. Uh, that uh, is the pivot center of the medial pivot motion. Uh, the lateral condyle, tibial condyle is a uh, rotate around this yellow line. This is the longitudinal axis. So uh, kinematic alignment is is performed using medial pivot uh, medial pivot knee like this. Uh, this one is uh, this component has the very very high conformity for the medial side. Uh, relatively flat lateral side. That can induce medial pivot motion uh, in the longitudinal uh, tibial axis is here, is by uh, the medial side uh, conformity uh, that it is similar like the TKA ball in socket, in, uh, sorry, so THA, like the THA, uh, that the medial side forms uh, the ball in socket. Uh, that uh, medial condyle or the femoral condyle is captured by the conca concavity of the medial side of the polyethylene. On the lateral side, the flat and can move anterior and posterior freely. So this is uh, operation is quite similar. It cut the distal femur and cut the femur post uh, femur posterior uh, are the same thickness of the component thickness. Uh, this is using this uh, puddle. If uh, this patient had a media away, the lateral side is puddle is uh, cut the bone uh, for the nine millimeter. But the media side to compensate for the cardiac loss, this puddle is two millimeter thicker than the lateral side. Then eventually, so our bone is cut in the same thickness as the component. For example, the most post, most uh, component have the nine millimeter thickness in the distal side. So our uh, lateral side cut nine, mm, uh, nine millimeter, uh, media side cut seven millimeter. Uh, because media side is cartridge is already gone. Uh, the thickness is considered to be the two millimeter. So two millimeter plus seven millimeter equals nine millimeter. That is the same thickness as the component. So like this. And the posterior side. In the most patient have the intact, you are nearly intact posterior condyle. So uh, the set that this uh, cutting block uh, the uh, parallel to the PCA, posterior condylar axis and the eventually posterior condyle is cut in the same thickness, uh, the media side and the other sides both. Most of the component has nine millimeter in the posterior thickness. So eventually this uh, cut bone thickness, it should be the same in the media and the lateral side and same as the component thickness of the posterior condyle. 
And then tibial also cut the parallel to the joint line, compensating the cartilage wear. So uh, adjust the posterior slope to the native slope. And then uh, incline the, this extra medial rod to cut plane to be the parallel to the joint line. At the time, uh, for the medial OA, lateral cut thickness should be the 10 millimeter, and medial size should be the uh, 8 millimeter, uh, because 2 millimeter of cartilage is already gone. So uh, this media cut, uh, beta cut, uh, can be done sliding the ankle bar for the lateral. Then make sure the cutting plane is parallel to the joint line uh, using the angel wing, and uh, thickness is, con uh, is evaluated using the style as say the media lateral side is the 10 millimeter and the media side uh, should be the 8 millimeter. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, after the kinematic alignment, TKA, leg alignment is not always straight. In the most cases, the velas in some cases, the vargas. And the component alignment is also velas. So uh, this is uh, something strange for uh, the surgeon is familiar to the mechanical alignment. But I am basically, I'm the uh, UK surgeon. So after the UK, the most patient have the patient original constitutional alignment. If the patient has the constitutional balance, the after the UK, the patient have the balance alignment after uh, the UK operation. So similarly, after the kinematic alignment, patient leg is, uh, most patient has the post-operative various alignment, uh, like this. But uh, some question, uh, we have some questions. Uh, why, is the, why, is the, why is the original joint surface uh, in some patient have the source, uh, just like the, this uh, severe bony defect? So, uh, lateral side is almost normal, but how well we should refer to the decide the media cutting thickness for the media side. And another one is even if we found the patient original uh, articular surface, if the patient has the extreme alignment, such as a very very severe beta alignment, uh, it is questionable that. Uh, can we naively replicate the patient native joint line? So in this patient, MPTA, uh, the tibia side joint surface is around 10 degrees in various uh, against the tibia mechanical axis. So or we can uh, replicate the, this native pro, uh, slope yeah, it is okay, it is safe or not. We don't know, that we are worried about so too many, uh, too severe various placement of uh, the component. Uh, because many papers show that the alignment outlier, uh, for example, plus minus three degrees in various or Vargas can cause a loosening after TKA. So revision rate should be higher higher than the component that is implanted in the neutral alignment. So uh, in our experience, we want to avoid the two beta's and the two vargas placement. But uh, using the kinematic alignment, and some uh, component is implanted three degrees or more in beta's. Uh, but one paper shows that uh, reported by how uh, it shows the 10 years survival rate of implant with unrestricted uh, kinematic alignment. So some patients have the severe various 
leg alignment uh, in HKA uh, more than five or six degrees and uh, very severe tibia articular surface and sometimes more than six degrees on the ankle degrees. Even uh, for these patients, extreme alignment patients, the 10 years survival rate is accounted for around uh, 98% for uh, the aseptic lo loosening. So, uh, similar, this is the, only the one uh, report from the one hospital, but uh, recent national registry data shows the uh, the green the green line is unrestricted kinematic alignment, and the blue line is other type of uh, including. Uh, mechanical alignment and other type of kinematic alignment, such as functional alignment or restricted kinematic alignment. Comparing the unrestricted kinematic alignment and other type of uh, TKA, the uh, survival rate is similar up to seven years. So gradually we can have uh, the evidence the component alignment and the leg alignment doesn't matter. But again, in the agile patient, if the agile patient have the more various uh, leg and the more various inclination of the tibia. So we are still worried about the extreme alignment after the naively applied the kinematic alignment TKA. So, uh, to resolve uh, our worry about the extreme alignment, uh, this is a restricted kinematic alignment. Uh, that is, uh, the kinematic alignment cut, uh, that is a parallel cut to the joint articular surface, is performed within the safe range. Otherwise, if the uh, leg or uh, joint line alignment is over uh, the boundary. For example, more than three degrees or four degrees, then bone cut is made in the defined angle. Uh, for, in most reports, the boundary is set to three degrees to six degrees in the HKA and LDFA and the MPTA, like this. Uh, however, uh, there is uh, no evidence why three degrees is reasonable. Uh, because this is, seems to be, this boundary is, seems to uh, be defined using the data from the mechanical alignment. But I believe the outlier of the mechanical alignment and uh, angle after the kinematic alignment is completely different uh, because uh, outlier after the mechanical alignment is a true outlier. Maybe this such patient have not only the alignment, but all the gap balancing or uh, sort of this situation is should be the devastating. But using the kinematic alignment concept, uh, the most K, uh, KS user and uh, feel that after the KA, uh, uh, ligament balance is very, very adjusted throughout the motion. So situation is quite different after the kinematic alignment and uh, outlier of the mechanical alignment, if the patient have the three degrees or the five degrees in the situation is quite different. So. Uh, in the future, we should uh, find the reasonable boundary using the kinematic, after the kinematic uh, TKA data. So, uh, so 10 years, uh, five years or the 10 years, uh, the more and more patient and analyze. If the patient, uh, the alignment exceeds some boundary, 
then survival rate is getting down. So we can define the boundary using the evidence. But so now, it is maybe our feeling that three degrees or five degrees it should be the safe. Uh, but unfortunately, in the uh, in the Asian countries, see the most patient has extreme alignment. Oh, this is our data. So we simply compared uh, measured MPTA and LDFA before the uh, the surgery. Most of them are uh, osteoarthritis. In the week, we define the plus by five degrees as a normal range. Uh, the around half patient has more than five degrees in Paris in terms of the MPTA. And uh, although the most patient have the LDFA within the plus minus five degrees, uh, but uh, around 40% have the various LDFA, degree, de zero degrees or uh, less patient have the various LDFA. But normally LDFA should be around three degrees in the vulgus. So this is the characteristic of Japanese patient. So if we compare the Western people, Oh, that is the report by Almawi uh, in 2017. Uh, this data uh, includes the patient all over the world. It mainly in uh, main patient are Western people. So uh, the distribution is quite different. So not only the tibial side, but also the femur side uh, shift to the various direction. So, uh, vargas idraya is extremely rare in the Japanese patient. It is a uh, characteristic of the Japanese patient. So, if we uh, uh, calculate the mean LDFA and MPTA, LDFA, LDFA is smaller and MPTA is bigger. And so, both LD TBI side and the FEMA side shows the Vargas. Uh, that's the, uh, the Japanese patient. So eventually, if you apply the restriction, uh, most of patient fall out of the safe range. So around 80% pa patient requires uh, the restriction. restriction. If we use the previous report uh, restriction, uh, restriction boundaries. So, but well, this, uh, I believe this restriction pro, uh, protocol is very reasonable. But problem is uh, this uh, precise alignment control, control issue be. Uh, can be done using the computer-aided devices such as a robot, navigation, and PS5. But using the conventional uh, instruments, it is uh, virtually impossible to uh, control the various angle and vargas angle uh, to uh, perform the restriction, restricted kinematic alignment. But now I, so I want to uh, use the restricted kinematic alignment using the conventional instruments. So I measured the lateral malleolus angle. That is the angle between the, uh, the line between the knee to the lateral malleolus and the tibial mechanical axis. Uh, this angle is around 5.6 degrees. So, if the uh, this are end of this extra middle road, not exceed to the lateral malleolus, so this angle should be the less than five or six degrees. 
So this is a very, very mild uh, restriction using uh, the kinematic uh, using the conventional instruments. So eventually, is the mo using this technique, most patient is uh, uh, less than six degrees in Paris. So uh, this is a pre and post-operative MPTA data. So this is a pre-operative distribution of the MPTA, but using uh, our technique, most of patient is less than five degrees and around, uh, around more than 85% have the less than six degrees in Paris. Uh, this is very uh, not so precise, but roughly uh, we can restrict it to various alignments. So, so it is very practical and very useful. What problem is the uh, femur side? This is a distribution distribution of femur side, but this is uh, post-operative LDFA. Uh, that is not significant, significantly different because all patients we naively uh, compensate for the only the two millimeter uh, for the media side. Uh, that's uh, the affected side. But uh, some patients should be house the bone loss. Uh, but most uh, report the femur side uh, bone loss is. Uh, has been ignored. So uh, eventually the post-operative and pre-operative pre LDF is, is virtually the same. So the next step to uh, replicate the patient native joint line, we should uh, compensate for the femoral bone loss. But compared to the uh, tibial side, the uh, estimation of bone loss for the femur side is very, very difficult. I have no idea to how to estimate the bone loss for the femur side. But if uh, it is confirmed that the femur side has the bone loss, so uh, this is the idea to co compensate the more thickness for the bone loss. Uh, for example, is if the bone loss is estimated to be the one millimeter, we can insert one millimeter metal plate uh, between the paddle and joint line. So I measured uh, the compensating thickness and alignment change, LDFA change. Uh, roughly saying, if we add the one millimeter to media side, uh, around one millimeter uh, can be changed in terms of LDFA. But again, it is quite difficult to estimate the amount of bone loss for the female side. But I believe uh, bone loss, uh, there is a bone loss for the female side e most patient. Uh, this is uh, the CPAC classification uh, because uh, in the current tree, the phenotype, uh, that means the characteristic of the patient native alignment uh, is focused on uh, because in the previously, we can aim to the single goal, neutral and mechanical alignment, but now we should understand the patient or uh, characteristic of the patient knee and leg. So uh, leg alignment is uh, classified to the three, the various neutral uh, paragraphs. Uh, this time we use the HKA, not the mechanical HKA, uh, that is only the major on the X-ray, uh, that is uh, the mechanical uh, HKA. But 
uh, for this CPAC classification, we use arithmetic HK that is the MPTA sub subtracted by the LDFA. Oh, that is uh, the compensates uh, the cartilage loss. And if uh, the joint line is restored to the patient, the native one, Oh, the arithmetic HK is considered to be the patient native alignment uh, because uh, arithmetic HK shows uh, the situation of the HKA uh, in the situation uh, where the femur and the tibia joint line is parallel. Uh, using uh, this arithmetic HKA, uh, or near the classifies or three, uh, three into three, various, various, neutral, and vargas. And then MPTA and LDFA, MPTA and LDFA. And then uh, if uh, this uh, value is 180 degrees, that is the perpendicular to the uh, like axis. So it is considered to the neutral. And it is smaller than 180. And that shows the medially inclined joint line named the apex distal and more than 180 degrees, the apex proximal. They're com uh, combining the arithmetic HK and JLO. Uh, OG are categorized into the nine Category and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. So combination is various neutral vagus and the apex digital neutral and apex approach mark. So uh, I calculated, uh, classified uh, the CPAC classification using our patients. Uh, surprise increase. And the, around 60% 60, uh, 60 of patients showed the class one, uh, that is the apex distal and the various leg alignment. This is quite different from the Western people. Uh, this is the Australian data is uh, not concentrated to the type one here. Uh, but mainly type two, uh, type one and type three is the battery same. But uh, alignment neutral, but most uh, patients have the APX distal. That is the characteristic of the Western people. But in Asian people, the Japanese people in the concentrated to the uh, type one, beta and the APX distal. No, this is a healthy patient and Australia OA patient. The distribution is similar in the OA patient and healthy patient. Uh, because uh, the HKA is, uh, can ignore the cartilage loss, uh, only express the situation of bone. So, uh, even after the osteoarthritis, only the cartilage situation is changed, uh, but bony change is uh, never occur in the patient as long as there is no bone loss. When compare uh, the post-operative alignment, and it is a Java patient because I applied some mild restriction. His distribution is a little bit changed after the operation. Uh, but uh, using uh, the, uh, this is the, also the restricted kinematic alignment. Uh, distribution is virtually same after uh, the TKA. Uh, for the Western people, uh, because uh, there is uh, so many patients uh, have the severe various alignment that should be collected uh, using the least repeat kinematic alignment. If we naively uh, perform the kinematic alignment, the pilot cut the 
cut the form parallel to the jaw line. This percentage uh, never change after the operation. But it is uh, still risky or uh, we have a concern to the two beta. So we have some uh, restriction. So this distribution has changed after the operation. Uh, and this is uh, the other type of kinematic alignment, so-called soft tissue respecting kinematic alignment, uh, where is tibia bone cut is uh, decided by the ligament balancing. Well, this technique, after the distal femoral bone cut, the tibia cut is line is defined by the parallel to the joint line using uh, the spacer like this. And another one is uh, <clears throat> other technique is after uh, the femoral bone cut, insert that femoral trial and measure the space here uh, using the curved gap gauge. Uh, that is the uh, that can uh, measure the thickness of the media side like this. So if this thickness is three millimeter using the double stylus and uh, cut the bone in the difference in the media side and lateral side, if this thickness is three degree, uh, three millimeter, uh, set the lateral side is 10 degree, uh, sorry, 10 millimeter and media side uh, for the same millimeter. Then, the cutting plane should be parallel after that. It is quite uh, popular in Japan, but uh, report is very, very limited. So uh, it is not famous in other countries, but in Japan, it is quite a uh, standard operation procedure. But now using the computer aid devices, uh, we can manipulate the bone cutting angle to make the balance the gap. Oh, this is a kind of gap balancing using uh, the computer devices because uh, using the computer device such as a robot, uh, we can measure uh, the ligament laxity throughout the range of motion. So uh, adding the laxity value and bone cut thickness, we can estimate the bone gap after the implantation. So uh, during the operation, uh, if we cut, uh, manipulate the cutting angle and cutting thickness, uh, this gap, estimated gap can be changed. So manipulating femur side and the tibia side and find a good implant position to uh, make the good balance. Uh, this is the uh, so-called digital gap balancing technique. So uh, another technique is the inverse kinematic alignment. Uh, that is the tibia first technique. The basically, uh, kinematic alignment is the femur driven technique. Uh, uh, make uh, the femoral axis, femoral uh, condylar axis first, then decide the tibia cutting plane. But in the inverse kinematic alignment, uh, that is quite similar to the gap balancing technique. So cut the tibia, the parallel to the joint line, and then uh, cut the distal femur and posterior femur to make the parallel gap. Uh, this is the tibial base, so-called tibial base functional alignment. And this is the femur base functional alignment. And uh, cut the femur in the same thickness as uh, the component thickness then manipulate the tibia cutting surface to make the balanced extension and the flexion gap. In this time, uh, the flexion gap in the flexion gap lateral side is slightly loose compared to the media side. So uh, as I introduced, 
Oh, there are many types of kinematic alignment and its derivatives. So uh, we should call change the name to the kinematic alignment to the personal alignment. So uh, includes that includes all type of kinematic alignment and its derivatives. Uh, because kinematic alignment is uh, true measured resection. Uh, but in the current tree, there are uh, another type of kinematic alignment, so-called functional alignment, that is respect to the uh, ligament balancing. Uh, in recent tree, the kinematic name of kinematic alignment is used to contrast to the mechanical alignment. But now we should use the name uh, personalized alignment instead of kinematic alignment uh, because the policy is quite different even in the personalized alignment. The, in the personalized alignment, aimed to personalize leg alignment, personalized component alignment, and personalized gap. So mechanical alignment is again one size hit all approach. And uh, this is the patient's basic approach. So uh, we should change the personalized alignments. That includes the true kinematic alignment, restricted kinematic alignment, functional alignment, inverse kinematic alignment, and uh, so-called adjusted mechanical alignment. But other than the true kinematic alignment, we need computer devices. And now, uh, there are two types of kinematic alignment, uh, personalized alignment, sorry. The one is the kinematic alignment. Uh, that is a major uh, kind of major resection uh, that aims to make the uh, femoral condylar axis, so-called cylindrical axis, but functional axis uh, aim to restore, uh, make the balance gap, uh, like the sling, gap, uh, kind of gap balancing, gap balancing technique. So kinematic alignment is a major uh, resection technique, true major resection technique. And the aim is uh, restore the pre-diseased articular surface. So uh, this is a kind of anatomical approach and the independent cut, bony landmark based cut. And minor gap balance is uh, allowed. And uh, this is uh, used uh, in this technique, CR component or medial pivot component is used. Uh, if, uh, if we make some restriction, uh, perform the kinematic alignment with the, the step range, we call the uh, restricted kinematic alignment. Uh, other type of uh, personalized alignment is functional alignment. That is a kind of gap balancing technique. Uh, this uh, aim of this approach is make the balance gap throughout the range of motion. This is a kind of functional approach and a dependent cut. Uh, using the robot, uh, uh, there are three ways of the functional alignment. And one is the simultaneous control, the uh, control of the media, uh, tibia side and the femur side in the same time, or femur first technique, and finalize the T femur uh, side, and then decide the tibia side. And uh, last one is the tibia first technique, so called the inverse uh, kinematic alignment, and the finalize the tibia first, and then uh, cuts the distal femur and the posterior femur to make the balance gap. Uh, in this uh, technique, the most functional alignment is use uh, the PS component. And uh, recently, uh, this technique is performed using the robot. Uh, 
uh, I believe uh, there are three key elements in of the knee. One is the morphology, and second is soft tissue and alignment. Uh, this uh, combination make the patient own kinematics. So these three elements uh, uh, form the best harmony. And one element decides the other two elements. And one element is decided by the two other uh, elements. So uh, we have introduced the many types of uh, the kinematic alignment. But the difference is the starting point. Uh, this true kinematic alignment is start from morphology. So cut uh, the bone at the same thickness as uh, the component thickness. Soft tissue splitting or functional approach is respect the soft tissue. The restricted kinematic alignment is uh, respect the alignment. But the starting point is different, but aiming the same goal. Uh, that is the patient specific kinematic, uh, patient specific harmony of three elements. Using the computer devices, we can control simultaneously in the three components. Anyway, uh, I will skip this one because this is a very, very practical. The, and next time uh, I will introduce how to uh, do the robotic aesthetic kinematic alignment. Then uh, this is the last slide. This is a take home message. Personal alignment uh, is a very simple concept. So set the components along the patient native the line. So goal is to set uh, the patient or set the patient or goal, not the single goal. To uh, restore uh, the patient specific alignment, patient specific soft dish balance, and the patient uh, specific morphology. But uh, there are some derivatives. That difference is the starting point. But uh, estimated a goal is the same. The patient uh, specific uh, balance the situation of alignment, soft dish, and morphology. So goal is different among the patients. So it is called personalized. So con this uh, name in the contrast to mechanical alignment that is aiming a single goal, also called neutral mechanical alignment. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Prof, you can stop sharing. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor, for this very insightful presentation. Thank you. Uh, let's have a short uh, Q&A session. Professor, is there a risk for too much virus when you are undertaking a kinematic alignment, especially when you're using a conventional instrumentation? Yeah, that is, yes, that is a problem. But this is my uh, experience. Uh, too much virus doesn't matter. Sometimes uh, the various angle uh, can be seven degrees and eight degrees because in Japan, Japanese patient, as I presented in my uh, in my slide, uh, some patients have the more than seven, eight, or sometimes more than ten degrees in various. So eventually, the implant is tibia component is implanted more than seven or eight degrees. But up to three years, there is no, uh, completely no problem. And such patients have a very good period after the operation. But we need to keep looking carefully to such patient. But in my experience, some patients have loosening 
or uh, some uh, failure after the TK, uh, after the mechanical alignment, percentage is smaller. But so far, I use for three years of kinematic alignment and uh, more than 200 patients, there is no revision case. If I experience some patient that have the loosening or mechanical failure of the component, the patient have the eight degrees of various. So we should limit uh, the various angle up to six degrees or seven degrees. But we have, so far, we have no data. Uh, we should limit the various angle. Otherwise, we can make the uh, loosening. But most uh, report have not show the limit. So maybe in the near future, uh, some report shows the more than the, uh, eight degrees or nine degree or five or six degree is risky. But so far we no data. Personally, I have also no data of the limit. But normally, generally speaking, up to three degrees or five degree, it should be same. So most report uh, makes a boundary of uh, the three degrees or five degrees. But we should find uh, the reasonable evidence-based uh, boundary for the restriction. But using the robot, most, most robots have the restriction for the up to five degrees. I currently I use the ROSA for the zipper pyramid. Uh, using a ROSA, we cannot uh, the set the component up to five degrees. We cannot set the six degrees or seven degrees. So eventually, <laughs> using a robot, uh, most of surgeon uh, using the restricted up to five degrees, I think. Thank you very much, Professor. Professor, do you think on one side you can do a mechanical alignment and on yes, the sir. other side you can do a kinematic alignment and do a comparison? Do you have some data on that? Yes, yes. Uh, not so many patients, uh, but I several uh, around 10 patients, maybe. I Most patients uh, say that the kinematic wine is better, very natural. Do you think there's a scope for a large study looking at mechanical alignment on one knee and a kinematic alignment on another knee? Because you do a lot of knees. Yeah. Uh, oh, so using the previous uh, report? No, do you think you can do a large study on one uh, knee, yeah. one side yeah, yeah. Uh, mechanical alignment and the other side kinematic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but... It, uh, it is important that the using the previous uh, scoring system, such as KSS, also need score on the other type of uh, scoring system, cannot distinguish this uh, the patient feeling. Oh, it is very uh, important. Uh, well, I ask to the patient which knee is better. The most patients uh, say that this kinematic alignment is better. But using the uh, existing uh, scoring system, there is uh, no difference. So uh, we, I think we can find the good scoring system that can distinguish, uh, distinguish uh, the benefit of kinematic alignment, uh, such as feeling. Uh, for example, in Japan, sitting on the floor is very important. But uh, in the such uh, activity is easier after the kinematic alignment. But uh, there's no uh, item for express this activity in the current week because most uh, score is uh, come from the Western countries. Thank you very Maybe much, Professor. I, uh, I think uh, this technique is very beneficial for the Asian patient, especially Asian patient. 
Professor, one last question before we wind yeah. up the session. Professor, how do we find the native joint line, especially when you have both knees are arthritic? So you don't have a comparison, right? So how do we find whether it's in uh, the joint and obliquity? Yes, uh, this is several uh, way. The one way is uh, respecting the soft tissue, the cut, the distal femur, and the cut, uh, the tibia, parallel to the distal femoral joint line. It is a very popular procedure after uh, uh, in Japan, but Unfortunately, uh, lack of data, uh, reported data. So uh, we make some group of the kinematic alignment group in Japan and gather the data from them. So some surgeon using such technique. Basically, I use uh, the caliper technique. Uh, it is, as you say, to find a native joint line is quite difficult because most patients have the bone loss, especially for the tibial side, uh, also in the femur side. But I uh, refer to uh, the margin of the cartridge, remnant cartridge. So uh, near uh, the tibial spine, there is some cartridge. To the uh, media side, uh, the cartridge is gradually thinner and finally disappeared. This point should be the two millimeter below the previous joint line. I think so. Uh, using the double stylus, the point, the center of the lateral condyle, and cutting thickness should be the ten millimeter, and point to the at the margin of the remnant cartridge, and then point uh, the stylus and set the cutting uh, thickness below the eight millimeter being the margin of the remnant cartridge. I believe that should be uh, the parallel to the, uh, the previous joint line. But uh, some patient is too bearers. So I limit. Uh, I want to limit the tibial beta sangra up to six degrees. So I, as I say, uh, said in my presentation, the extra medial rot not exceed to the lateral malleolus. Then uh, if the beta uh, inclination is too beta, so uh, extra medial rot uh, sometimes exceed to the uh, lateral malleolus. So I move back to the extra medial rot to uh, the lat uh, in front of the lateral malleolus. So we can luckily, very luckily, make the restriction. So avoid the too much beras. Thank you very much, Professor. Professor, I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Thank you for this very insightful presentation, and I'm sure it's going to benefit a lot of people. Thank you so much for Thank joining us.